Welcome to the Quiz 8 walkthrough for CGS 2518. This quiz does a little bit of Chapter 7, a lot of Chapter 8, and a little bit of 9. So I'm going to give you this walkthrough to walk you through all the bits and pieces of this. So the first part of this video, we're going to talk about how to use Scenario Manager. Here we have this new car loan with some values in it. And we're going to name each of these cells so that when you generate your scenario report, the, the report actually makes sense. So each of these cells you have to name according to what SimNet asks you to do. And these names have to be exact. You can't, you can't put any spaces in them. The capitalization matters. And of course, the spelling. If you do get any of those wrong, you can, like we learned before, you can go up to the Formulas tab in the Name Manager and edit them if need be. All right, so Scenario Manager is out here in the what if analysis. So let's add a scenario. The first one's going to be called Original Financing. And for the changing cells, you can do one of two things. You can either click on each one and put a comma in, to, in between each one, or if you hold the control key down, you can click on each of the cells individually as you need. And then hit OK. And there's the values from those cells. And that's fine because these are the original values. And hit OK. So that's our starting point. Now let's add a couple of other scenarios where we find out the total cost of the car. Let's call this one Intermediate Car. So give this one the right name. The changing cell does the same, but here we put in different values into those four changing cells. Looks like we're getting a little cash back on this deal. APR 2.4%. And then you can show the value in there if you want. And it generates the total cost of the car. Now let's make our last scenario and put these values in. Boo, interest rates. I hate car loans. So for our luxury car, then show the value. And this is the way you have to turn in the assignment. So make sure before you walk away that you leave it in this mode with the final answer of 62499 Now let's generate an output report. And here we want to see the uh, loan payment and the total cost of the car. And then hit OK. And now here we have the entire summary report for all three different scenarios and the total cost of the car in each one of those different scenarios, as well as the current scenario or the current position of all those cells over there in column D. All right, so that is it for the scenario manager for this assignment. Now let's go on to the next one. Let's deal with some data sets and some formatting and some filtering and some other valuable skills. So here we have a list of all the models and then their miles per gallon and some other uh, criteria, some other things that we want to know about the car to help us make the right decision on which car to get. This is assuming you wanted a new car. I'd never get a new car. Engage our filter here. Buy a two-year-old one and let somebody else take the depreciation hit. 
but I digress. So we've applied the filters. Now I want to see if the greenhouse gas score is greater than 8. I want to filter that out. And then the next filter it asks, got a few thousand rows. All right, we apply that filter. Then we apply the filter to the highway MPG. If it's greater than 35, we'll keep those rows. And now we have a lot fewer rows in our data set. So we've kind of whittled down the 2,000 rows of cars down to just this subset. Next, I want to filter out any transmissions that don't contain the word auto. So contains auto. And then I want to know whether the, the type is electric or, got to click on the little or button over here. So it equals electricity or the value of gasoline. So it gets rid of the hydrogen cars too. So now I've filtered it down even more. So now it says to take all this filtered data and copy it and put it into this sheet. So now we're going to paste special. You could thumb through all those, but I just click on this icon at the bottom that says paste special and then pick what I want from the list. And I want this one here. says to copy the header row down, down here into row 52. Type criteria into this cell and give that cell some formatting. Now we want to filter these 48 rows or some odd we want to make a list of just the cars that run on gasoline and have a highway MPG greater than 35, which is kind of silly because all those cars already have a MPG over 35, but that's okay. I'll get over it somehow. Now, filtered data, we're going to put down here. So this will be our output. And apply that same formatting to this cell. Auto fit the column width for column A here. So to do an advanced filter here, we go to data. And then the filter, we want to copy to another location. We already have the list range highlighted. So now we want to highlight the combination the criteria range, and then where do we want to copy it to? And just click on one row, the right width over here, and there you go. So this list here is the list of rows that meet the gasoline greater than 35 out of that other set of data. So this is a very advanced way of filtering a very large data set. You could have combined the last couple steps into this one, but I think we just wanted to show you a few different ways of filtering your data. So we want to format this as a table. Click on that one. My table has headers. Yep. All right, let's insert a column out here. And I want to create an icon out of the combined MPG. So I'm going to add a column in the whole sheet. So make sure you click on the N up top and add that. Then copy the data from here into here. And then let's do some conditional formatting. There's a few different ways to do it, but 
I found this to be the easiest one-stop shop. So select icon sets and then see which icon we want. And they say we want these four different bars. Show the icon only. And there you go. Now, even though that's an icon, you can also sort by that icon, which is kind of fun. Okay, fun for me. So if we take that highlight at all and sort, first I want to sort by the model. And then if there's multiple models, I want to sort by which one has the best MPG. And I want to sort by that icon. And you can sort by this one is on top. So now for each of those rows, there's a tie in the model name. So they have the same model name. It goes out and looks at the combined MPG icon and does its thing there. All right. So now let's highlight all this data. And we're going to use the subtotal tool here and hit OK. And the key to this one at each change in model, see this bottom one, it's checked. Uncheck that. I found that I didn't do it right the first time because that was checked by default for some reason. It was causing everything to be counted wrong. So change the function to average and then select these four columns. And there's our column and the smart way, combined CO2, whatever. So we have our four checked. And here's what it looks like. So at every change in model number, you get an average row that gives the average for that particular model number. Now see, there's three different levels up here on the left. There's three, which shows you all the detail. If you click on two, which is the way you want, it just gives you the average. And then if you click on one, it really breaks it down. And then you just have the, the grand total average. So click on two and leave it in that mode so that you can see for each car what the average of those four values is. Now we have a pivot table that refers to that data. And the data has gone out of step with, with what the uh, pivot table is. So what you have to do is click inside there and then go to Pivot Table Analyze and hit the Refresh Data button. Just click on that, select all, or just click on the icon, and that refreshes your data. Because anytime you have a pivot table, as you remember, if your data changes underneath, the pivot table does not recognize the issue. So you have to refresh it in order to keep your data and your pivot table in sync. Then it says to format the pivot table, pick on that. That's awesome. Now it says to add a slicer. So come down here and pick this one, the smart way. To and we only want the summarized data that have a elite status for the smart way column. So click on that. All right, so let's do the last part of this quiz here. This is a solver model, which is really out of assignment nine, module nine. But let's do a simple one here. So what we have is a bakery that wants to maximize their profit on how much they can produce per day. So there's four different products here, birthday cake, cupcakes, cookies, and more cookies. So we have some math up here, the sum product formula, which is out of module eight. So the hours work takes those four cells there and multiplies it by column E. So as we change these numbers, the total hours required to make that many of those four different products automatically adjust itself. So we need to make sure that we, we only have 12 hours in a day, so we can't work more than that. So that's one constraint. Then we also, the total cost of the ingredients has to be less than $200 because we only have so much stuff on the shelf. And then we can only produce X amount of those per day. So we can make one cake, we can make four cupcakes, we can make six of those cookies and six of the lemon bars. So what values do we put in here? 
can we put a 1.5? Does it make any sense to make one and a half cakes? Not really. So all those four cells have to also be integers. So we've got those four constraints. Now we need to enable our solver model if it isn't already enabled. So click on options and then add-ins. And right now it's already enabled, but if it's not, you can come down here to the Manage button and hit Go for the Excel add-ins and check the Solver add-in and hit OK. And now on the Data tab, you see it's there. Now here's my Solver Parameters box. Let's move that over to here and let's fill it out. So what's our objective? It's our profit up here in B1. And we want to maximize it by changing these four cells. How many of those four different products can we make to maximize our profits for a day? Now that we've got that set, let's add some constraints. So the first constraint we said is the hours worked can only be, it must be less than or equal to 12. So the hours worked is calculated by that sum product formula there in B3. So that has to be less than D3. And then the total cost of the ingredients has to be less than the $200 in D4. So let's hit OK. You should have those two constraints now created. So let's add the next one. The assignment says you have to do this in four different constraints, but I'm going to show you how to do it in one, because you can highlight all four of those cells and make sure that they're less than or equal to those four cells. So. Now, finally, we'll take C7 through C10 and make them integer and hit solve. And we get the right answer. We get 1, 4, 0, and 5 is the optimal answer. So we see by this little thing, we got an answer report. Solver found a solution. Yay, all constraints and optimization conditions are satisfied. Hit OK, and you'll see that it generates a little answer report down here on the bottom. You don't need that, but it doesn't hurt anything. And then save it and submit it and find the file. Yes, submit the file. Yep, take your 10 points and run away. All right, see you in the next video. Have a good week. Go Knowles.